Robinson on Barkley. It's his game to win. Barkley, 20-footer, yes, with 1.8 seconds. Here's Marbury on the drive. We move to the second round of the NBA playoffs on a spectacular evening in Phoenix, Arizona. The U.S. Airways Center is filled to capacity as the seventh-seeded San Antonio Spurs take on the third-seeded Phoenix Suns with the backdrop of a lot of memorable games between these two teams. With Hall of Famer Doug Collins and our sideline reporter Marty Snyder, this is Kevin Harlan checking out now our Taco Bell starting lineups. Veterans fill the lineups, but Doug, you've got your eyes set on the... 37-year-old defensive-minded Grant Hill of the Phoenix Suns. Well, Kevin, he's going to be so important in this series like he was in the Portland series, game one in that Portland series. Andre Miller, 31 points. Portland comes in and see, uh, steals the home court. Grant Hill proceeds to guard him the last five games, hold him to 13 points a game through that series. He will start out tonight on Manu Ginobili, and then he will guard later on Tony Parker. So he was going to have his hands full. And Kevin, you've heard me all the time. When I talk about the San Antonio Spurs, there's Tony Parker. He's going to come off the bench down the road, giving him that firepower that Ginobili used to do. Tim Duncan in the post. But the guy who makes this team special, the Spurs, is Manu Ginobili. That's who the Suns have to do a job on. The San Antonio Spurs got here by taking care of Dallas. Four games to two. Phoenix Suns beat the Portland Trailblazers in round one. And here we go with our officials, Bennett Salvatore, Kenny Maurer, and Michael Smith. And Steve Nash begins it against Hill. And Amari Stoudemire works inside on McGeist. McGeist did a very good job on Nowitzki in round one. We have a totally different matchup here with Amari Stoudemire's speed and his power going to the basket with Dirk. He played so much on the perimeter. Nice with the miss. Stoudemire with the defense. Rebound was brought down by Grant Hill. And this is over Ginobili. Hill puts the Suns on top two nothing. Kevin, I thought the other night in game six, Grand Hill only had one basket in that game, and I thought he was the most important player on the floor. 12 rebounds, three blocks, the defensive job that he did the entire game. That's what they're going to need from him in this series. It dies with a late close by Stoudemire, and a rebound by Steve Nash, playing with a bad right hip. A hip hit things that hooks on Hill with the left hand, he puts it up and in. Well, good sign there by the Phoenix Suns. It looks like Nash was moving pretty well in that play. They're going to keep the pace of this game up. The Spurs want to push the ball, but they don't want to shoot quick jump shots. Here's Hill, a spring by Nick Dice, and inside. How does San Antonio, Doug, want to play this game? Well, they want to push the ball, but not look for quick jump shots. I mean, they want to push it. They want to run for layups. They want to run for quick post-ups, but they don't want to get into a quick jump shooting competition with the, with the Phoenix Suns. And it's Hill once again. On George Hill, Grant was spinning, McDice was reaching in, George Hill, who emerged in that first round, picks up his first personal foul for the Spurs. Steve Nash, uh, Nash does such a wonderful job of that little hesitation dribble, and he sort of straightens you up a little bit on the defensive end, and then that little quick burst. Steve Nash is a lot quicker than he looks, Kevin. He's so efficient on the floor as we see Grant Hill knock down his first free throw. So we see that Poor Steve Nash, who is playing in playoff game number 109 in his career. He's played so many, and he's not played in an NBA final. And that is something he would like to change this year. He's played in a lot of good teams with his son's ball club. But, Doug, it always seems like San Antonio gets in the way. Yeah, he is 0-6 in the so that graphic against the Spurs. Four here with the Suns, two with the Dallas Mavericks. And here is Nash, who struggled in game six because of the hip, and Stoudemire left uncovered. And the rebound pulled down by Jefferson. That's what they'd like to see more out of Richard Jefferson, more rebounding early in the year. He did not do a good job rebounding his position. This is going to be a carrying the ball on Richard Jefferson, just a careless play. Absolutely nobody guarding him at all, just a, a lapse in concentration. Collins, a screen on Hill, opens the door for Nash, and so Doug Nash has gone to the right. 
two times. Well, if you want to know what the defensive key is going to be in this series, it's who's going to be able to defend screen roll best because both of these teams are going to run it about 70 times a game. Ginobili's getting ready to run it here with Duncan. There's a switch on defense, pick and roll. Ginobili and Duncan, McDice cleaning it up. And McDice, who staggered during the season, gets the rebound and gives it off to Duncan. And Duncan kind of closed that Dallas series in a very quiet way, but he's hurt from right there. Duncan watching Nash, and Steve goes again inside. He's got three layups in a row. I think Steve Nash is feeling better after that hip impingement that bothered him in games three through six against the uh, Blazers. He's had about three days rest. They really haven't done anything with him. He just rested, got off his feet, and he's off to a great start here tonight. Now he's watching George Hill on the near side, approaching nine minutes to play here in the first quarter. Ginobili, Nick Dice, deflected by the active Nash and out of bounds in the shot clock at eight point. Up, it was a turnover and a foul. And the foul goes on Nick Dice for the first time. Now, Steve Nash, you see the reverse. Watch how he uses his body here. He uses the rim to shield himself so that Duncan cannot block that shot. Just a crafty player around the basket. Steve Nash uses both the right and left hands beautifully. Uses that backboard, the English, the kiss off the glass. A master mobile to floating shot. Here comes Donovan. He goes outside to Nash, working out. It's by Jefferson to it ease. He's going inside. Usually it's the San Antonio guards that drive inside the lane. And Popovich has got to find some way to stop Nash from getting inside. Yeah, he cannot like the start of this game. Steve Nash is having his way with George Hill. So let's see what happens when Popovich comes out of this timeout. 11 quick points by the Phoenix Suns. Steve Nash up to a great stop. 4-4. Four four. He has 8 of the 11 points. And the Suns have started 5-7 of seven with a 7-point lead early in the game. We are so up, so we had to calm ourselves down, get back into our game. Our game. We're going to give the ball to Detroit. Oh, Burns steals it. Any time that I'm playing up to my team, show our team is better. Our game. We're going to do it together. Together. One, two, three. Together. We're going to fight to make this circle tighter. Get back into our game. We believe in each other. We believe as a team. It takes teamwork to host that trophy. Get back into our game. The 2010 NBA Playoffs on TNT, brought to you by T-Mobile. Connect as much as you want with affordable family plans from T-Mobile. By GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15%. Call GEICO at 1-800-947-AUTO. By DirecTV. To get the most out of your high-def TV, you've got to hook it up to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. And by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. As we're back in Phoenix, time now for the cold hard facts presented Doug, by Coors White. Well, Kevin, tonight, the, what's at stake? The first game, the Sun Psyche. Why do I say that? Because this is their nemesis. They have come in here twice when the Suns have had the home court advantage. One game one, the Suns have never recovered. So a lot of angst here in Phoenix in this game one. And for the Spurs, they've had four days rest. They should be sharp. The pace of the game, try to keep Phoenix to as many under 30 quarters as you have. And the wins, they had six. In their losses, they did not have one 30-point fourth quarter in that screen roll defense that I talked about. And then the two X factors are going to be Jason Richardson, who had a brilliant series against Portland, and George Hill, who got off to a slow start here defensively, who was terrific against Dallas. Neither team has had a change out of that break. Approaching eight to play here in the first quarter with the Phoenix Suns going five of seven. Here is Hill on Hill. Grant working on George. We're getting close in shots to Phoenix Suns. We saw they changed the matchup there. They put Ginobili over on Steve Nash to try to calm him down. He got off to such a great start. Now, Brando watching Jefferson. Scott Myers on McDice. Jaron Collins is wrestling with Duncan. And Jaron Collins picks up the personal foul. A long time started with the Utah Jazz. Collins picks up his first for Phoenix. And what Jaron Collins is trying to do, obviously, front when he can, try to change his position. Do not let them throw the ball in the post easily to Duncan. If Collins gets a few fouls, it's no big deal. They'll come in with Channing Fry. And in fact, McGowan might come in him with him early but to try to change the matchup, maybe try to get Duncan to have to guard Stoudemire. Spurs to a seven. It was Richardson who was the star in the first series for the Suns against the Blazers. How about this, he had three 28-point or more games in the regular season, 79 games. He had three in the first playoff series. Huh? That's how hot he's been. 
and a lot of threes, Doug, a ton of threes. Yeah, he had, uh, within that series, Kevin, he had 22 threes, and the Spurs had 25 as a team in their first round series against Dallas. How about that? Shot clock is at six, and here is Ginobili, and this is over Grant Hill. 